this is the, I think our most interesting result, that S4 actually is able to solve the actual, as a generic sequence model, is able to handle the dependencies of length 16,000 here and is the first model to solve this task. And then and we've uh, evaluated this model on a bunch of uh, tasks across different data modalities and different tasks. Um, yeah, so these include images, text, audio, and time series. And I'll go through a couple of the most important experiments. First of all, on uh, we started with one of the most standard sequence modeling benchmarks, which is simply doing image classification, but when your image is flattened into a sequence of pixels. So this is something that's been catching on recently in models such as the Vision Transformer and others. Um, but the kind of the most pure version of this is trying to actually uh, do classification on images purely from pixels, but where the pixels are just seen as a generic sequence of pixels and where the model doesn't know about the 2D structure. Um, now, there's a lot of prior work here on a bunch of data sets. The most interesting result here is our result on the sequential CIFAR benchmark. Um, so the CIFAR 10 classification um, is a 32 by 32 image, and the sequential version turns it into sequences of length 1,024. Um, and the S4 model out of the box performs 15 to like 20, 30% better than all previous sequence models that were evaluated on this benchmark. Um, so it gets over 90%, which in the setting without data augmentation or anything else is actually um, even better than a simple ResNet 18. And we perform some other ablations comparing it directly to a ResNet, which is a 2D model, and found that um, S4, which doesn't even know about the 2D structure of the data, performs almost as well as, uh, as well basically as a ResNet across a bunch of regimes. Um, so for some more realistic sequence uh, or time series data, data sets, we tested on um, a speech classification task, which involves, it's called keyword spotting um, on a data set called speech commands, which consists of one second audio clips that need to be classified into words. Now, speech is difficult because, the, because of the high sampling rate, which makes sequences incredibly long. So here, um, because we have one second clips, the sequences have length 16,000, which is far longer than most sequence models are designed to address. And so usually speech pipelines require uh, substantial feature engineering. The most common way of doing this is using MFCC coefficients. And on this data set, the prior work that we compared against um, basically create these filter banks, which reduces the sequence length by a factor of 100 from 16,000 to 160. And using, using these um, pre-processed features, most baselines, pretty much all sequence models can do uh, pretty reasonably at least 80 or 90 plus percent. The interesting question is how they do on the raw data. So on the raw data, which had sequences of length 16,000, pretty much all of, um, all standard sequence models don't work well at all. Um, the only types of models that we're aware of that work are um, the specialized speech CNNs. Um, and we, you, we have one baseline here, which was designed for sequences of exactly this length for speech. Um, these models can do quite well, but um, a, our same generic S4 model um, that actually is almost 100 times smaller than the speech baseline compared against does even better. Um, and what's interesting is that these models do even better than all of the MFCC models. So this gives us some hope and some future directions for whether we can learn better features than the standard speech preprocessing just by using generic deep learning models. The final setting that we tested on this data set is showing that our model can also handle um, a regularly, uh, regular continuous data. So one problem that with working with time series in general is potentially um, missing value or having to deal with signals sampled at different frequencies. Um, so the way we test this is that we took our same model trained on the raw data, which was sequences of length 16,000 um, sampled at 16K Hertz. And then we tested it on, without retraining at all or 
knowing about um, differently sampled data, we tested it on data that was sampled at 8K Hertz. Um, so basically half the sequence length. And uh, the, the, the other baseline we compared against the speech CNN doesn't work in a setting, but because of properties of the S4 model, it actually works out of the box with no retraining on um, handling data sample at different rates. Um, the reason is because uh, of the first representation where S4 is implicitly a continuous time model. So it's implicitly modeling, not just the sampled sequence that you get, but the entire underlying continuous speech signal. And this allows it to handle um, the same signals when sampled at different rates. Here's the long range arena data set again. So again, this was, um, uh, there are six tasks here spanning all sorts of sequence lengths. And so as a generic, as a model that generically is good at long range dependencies because of the previously mentioned hippo theory, um, S4, again, just um, a simple S4 model that consists of layers uh, of the S4 block as state of the art on every single task in this data set. The most interesting result here is the path X task, which is again, another image classification task where you take, um, you, you take images and the task, the binary, binary classification task where you have to identify whether the markers are connected. Um, but instead of seeing the image, you just see a sequence of pixels. Um, and because the image is high resolution, the sequence is 16,000 pixels long. And this task is so hard that no previous sequence model has solved it. And furthermore, uh, many CNNs also, many 2D CNNs also can't solve it. So even like a Resna 18 can't solve this task if it's given the 2D version. Um, so this is the, I think our most interesting result that S4 actually is able to solve the actual, as a generic sequence model is able to handle the dependencies of length 16,000 here and is the first model to solve this task. Um, this benchmark was also originally used to benchmark the speed of models. Um, and as I mentioned, S4, and there's a typo here. This, the, the model was renamed from S3 to S4 at some point, if people are confused. Um, but as I mentioned, we have particular representation algorithms that makes S4 very efficient. Um, and it's as efficient as every other efficient transformer model that was uh, compared in this benchmark. And finally, we showed that S4 works, uh, has promise on text as well. So uh, text is an area where transformers are dominant instead of RNNs and CNNs. Um, and by taking a transformer backbone and swapping out the attention layer for S4, we show that um, it's quite close to the baseline, um, less than 0 0.8 perplexity off. And this is actually a substantial state of the art for attention-free models. Um, furthermore, by leveraging the RNN representation of the model, the trained S4 model can generate, uh, do autoregressive gener generation much faster than alternative models like the transformer.